Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you all this day, the day that the Lord has made. Take a moment if you would, look around at those that worship today. A little wave, a little smile, we'll welcome each other to God's house this morning. There you go. Or both hands, Joe. Yeah, you can do both. Yes. Well, that's coming. It is good to be with you today. Um, uh, if you have any prayer requests, uh, let any of the ushers know. Be happy to bring them to me and add them to the prayer list for today. We have a few extras um, for today. Um, outside of praying for the family of Gary Simmons, who we had the funeral for here on Friday, um, we pray for the family of Howard Wilkins, James McKay, and also Gladys Dumi. So names that are connected to members or members uh, like Gladys. She was in Arizona um, over the past few years and yet to let you know um, they're passing. And so we keep them in our prayers as well this day. Working on the roof, so that's a good thing going on here. And uh, good to be back with the high schoolers in Houston this past week. I had a brother pastor text me and say, boy, it's gonna get hot this week. And I said, 106 degrees hot? <laughs> And so uh, I'm like, 90? You know, that's uh, nothing. So good to be back. And, and the kids and I, we had a wonderful time um, down in Houston for the National Youth Gathering. We look forward um, here in a month or two once school gets started, taking a Sunday where they can share some of their experiences. And so I um, want to enjoy that is as well. Thank the Weber family um, for sponsoring the bulletin for this day. And had a wonderful quarterly voters meeting just a little bit ago, sharing some of those things. Always available if you're curious about the things that are going on here at St. Martin. I'm happy to talk to you about all those things as we move forward in this day. With that stated, we begin with our opening song today, which is Come, Let Us Worship. The Lord's blessings as we worship Him this day.
invite you to stand with me if you're able as we continue with our invocation and our confession and absolution for this day. In the name of our Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing in preparation for confession this day. from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. Let us confess our sins. I confess to God Almighty before the whole army of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to the last The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ.
We continue in worship as we read responsibly the intro appointed for this day. Your word is a lamp to my feet. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commands. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, grant us the Spirit to hear your word, and know the one thing needful, that by your word and spirit we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the readings appointed for this day. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the of Mamre as he sat in the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, while I bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three seahs of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. The epistle is from Colossians. You, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works within me. This is the word of the Lord. I once again invite you to stand with me, if you're able, as we continue reading, respond, or reading together the Alleluia book, verse appointed for this day. Alleluia! As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, 
And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I invite any children of the congregation to come forward at this time. Everybody out there for a children's message this day? Okay, we got a couple of the boys coming up here. Don't be shy. I'm going to stay standing today. I'm not going to, I don't have my chair today because this is an interactive Jesus time with the kids. So. so step one is we have some ones coming up here. So that's good. How are we doing today? Doing okay? How are you two? Are we good? So I need a volunteer. Will one of you five help me out? Anybody? Can anybody help me out? One of you two? Okay. Oh, that's awesome. All right, you stand right here. You're doing good. Stand right in the middle and face me. And I want you to hold on to some things. All right? Got it? Still got it? How we doing? Doing okay? Uh-huh. Is it getting harder? I hope so. <laughs> Eight o'clock I had a professional balancer. How we doing? Good? You're still holding on? Alright, how we doing now? <laughs> how we doing? What's happening? Is this getting hard to hold on? Yeah. Is it getting hard? What, what might happen? Oh, it's going to fall. Yeah. Good job. Let's give a hand for that. That was good. You did exactly what I wanted you to do. So, if I put enough boxes on here, it gets hard to hold on to things, doesn't it? Yeah. And my point for this is really, really simple. Sometimes in our lives, we have a lot of things going on, and it gets difficult to hold on to everything. Now, you guys are in summer break, so you may not have some of the things going on that you might in fall or different things with family or vacations. you got a lot of stuff going on, and, and like it is with these boxes, sometimes it's hard to hold on to everything. Ask your moms and dads, your, your, your teachers. Sometimes there's so many things going on in our lives that we find it difficult to hold on to everything. And you know what? Sometimes we can't. We want to try and do everything so well, but sometimes there's too much going on. And so they're kind of like these boxes. They keep stacking up higher and higher until finally they fall. But in our second lesson for today, Paul is talking to a church. It's called the Colossians. That's who he wrote it to. And he told them that God is able to hold everything together. We, like these boxes, sometimes we hold on to things and we can't hold it ourselves. But who can? God can hold it all. Our special verse for when our, the high schoolers and myself we were down in Houston this past week was in all things. And the purpose of that from Colossians 1, right close to the text we have today, is that God holds everything together. We hold things and sometimes they get shaky and sometimes they fall apart, but God says, I never allow anything to get shaky and I hold everything together. He holds them world, the earth, the animals, and even us as people. And we can trust and rejoice that God, even though sometimes we're struggling, or we might be a little scared, that God is with us, and He holds on to us tightly, because He cares so much for us. Remember what He did, what Jesus did? We have the cross in our sanctuary to remind us of how much Jesus holds us together. And when He grabs a hold of us in faith, He says, I'm not letting go. I can take care of all the things that might be tough to carry. He says, I can carry them all. And that's what we can rejoice in today. We can be happy because we have a God who can hold on to all things. 
Would you fold our hands? Can you pray with me? Can you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, we thank you today that you hold all things together. Sometimes it's hard for us to hold on to everything. And yet we know you are with us, you care for us, and you love us. Help us always to remember you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up here today. Thanks for helping me. Thanks for holding on as well as you did. We'll continue as we sing our song of preparation for the sermon this day. Build my life.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that serves as the basis for this morning's meditation comes to us from the Gospel lesson from Luke chapter 10, where we hear these words of Jesus Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. So for the words of our text for us this day. In the name of our Savior Jesus, who comes to us and says, listen. Listen to my words of peace, of hope, of life, of salvation. Dear friends, as the name as we gather in his word, we can rejoice knowing the one person needful for us and for our salvation. This may have happened to you once, maybe a couple times. Maybe it was with your family, with your kids. Maybe this happened in the workplace. You were given a decision to make. Or with your children, you're trying your best to, to work with them and, and direct them. And you thought you were doing the right thing. You thought it was what was best for your kids, for your parents, in the workplace, in the neighborhood, could be anywhere. And yet even though you thought you were doing the right thing, it turns out it wasn't the best thing for your child, for your parent, for the workplace, for the neighborhood. You thought for sure this is the right way. I'm doing the right thing. But then to come to find out, it wasn't. If, you, if you're thinking of something that has happened to you, you know a little bit of where Martha's at in our text for today. This text from Luke chapter 10 is a pretty familiar one. Mary and Martha, as Jesus comes into their midst, and we have this scene, and it's a little bit complicated. We see a little jolt at the end, Jesus talking to Mary, those words that I've given. And as we look at this, this text, we might want to flip it around. Because what we find in this text from Jesus himself, he's praising the adoring, dreamy-eyed, meditative Mary, who is sitting at, her, at his feet. And he chastises, he scolds Martha, who's hustling and bustling and thinking of him, serving and taking care of him. Now in our world, like I said, we might think things are upside down. Martha's the one working and serving and preparing the place and cleaning the house and getting everything ready for Jesus, who has come into their midst. And what's Mary doing? Nothing! We might be like, why is not Mary being scolded? And Martha being lauded. Because she's the worker bee. She's the one who's getting things done. And Mary is not. We might want to turn this story around and praise Mary, or praise Martha instead of Mary. And yet, as we look at this text, it's important for us to take a step back and realize who is speaking. It's Jesus as he's in this place and we know God's word is holy and right and so there must be a point that Jesus is trying to make in doing something that we might twist around so who is Martha what is she doing that she's being scolded by Jesus later in the text well we can certainly say what she's not She's not a bad woman. She's not a slacker. Not at all. She's an energetic woman for the kingdom. Jesus is coming into her place, and she wants to make sure everything is prepared rightly so. How many of us would do the same? So we know she's not a, a bad woman. She's what we would call today a great church worker who's ready, able, and willing to serve when needed. So we know she's not a bad woman. And we also know what she's doing is certainly not a bad action. She's not sleeping in. 
She's not saying, I don't care who's here, Jesus or anybody else. Big deal. We don't see that at all. She's not running around playing games and then just showing up and seeing what it is. If anything, she's in the kitchen. She's working and she's preparing a wonderful dinner for her master. In the midst of that, we might ask the question, isn't she doing the right thing? Wasn't that, or wouldn't that be what Jesus truly wants? Isn't she truly serving him? Mary, Martha thought so. So much so that she says to Jesus, Hey, Lord, tell this dreamy-eyed listener here that's not doing a darn thing to get up and help me in the kitchen. Jesus, in the midst of this law, his point to her, to Martha, was this. Your serving is wonderful. Your mindset is wonderful. But there's a better thing out there than what you're doing. There is a better good. And he wraps it up in those little few words, one thing needful. The food, the room, all of that's good. Serving our God is what we are supposed to do. We're gifted to do that. But at the appointed time, at this time, Jesus says to Martha, what Mary's doing is actually better. Because now is the time for you both to listen to me. And listen to what I have to say. These words of peace and comfort and life and salvation. Thinking about a time or an appointed time makes me think about other times in Scripture. Throughout the generations of the Old Testament, the people of God were saying, When? You keep talking, O oh Lord, about this Savior who is to come. We don't see him. We as New Testament Christians are followers of the cross and the empty tomb. We look back at them and we see how the story plays out. And scripture tells us, at just the right time, Jesus was born into the world. At God's appointed time, that's when it was time for Jesus to be born and to live and to die and to rise again. And in a very smaller sense, this is what Jesus is saying to, to Martha as well. The better thing, the appointed time has come for you listen. Even in the midst of what might sound a little harsh or a little bit upside down, we see Jesus' words. What does he say to Martha? He calls her out not once, but twice. You can almost hear him go, Martha, Martha, you're busy about many things. You're distracted by many things. Come and hear what is most needful, the one thing Needful. Whenever I see these things in Scripture, we get that emphasis. Martha, Martha. My mind jumps to when Jesus is, is born in the proclamation. We hear those words, exceedingly great joy. Now maybe it could be with joy they proclaim that Jesus is born. That might be enough. But in the Scriptures it says exceedingly great joy. That's to let all of us as the readers know, this is a big deal. This is the 10 out of 10. This is truly not just joy, but exceedingly great joy that is coming to you. That being our Savior, Jesus. In a similar sense, he emphasizes his love and compassion and care to Martha. Not trying to put her down for what she's doing, but to bring her to the, what's better. His word. What he is about to share. For me, those are, this is another one of those perspective moments where I read this text and go, oh, I'm busy with a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things out there that can distract me. And at times, I need to just settle down, take a step back, take a breath, and sit in his word. To sit in the word of God who says, I'm with you through it all. 
to sit in the word of God that says, I am the all-powerful one. I am the one who has brought life and salvation to you. I am the good shepherd. I am the one who brings you life. We have a God who can hold on to all things. And he certainly can hold on to you. Acts his promise as he comes to us once again in his word. In the midst of all kinds of things going on in your life and in my life. Lots of things and chaos that can easily distract us. And even the good things. But they can pull us away as well because we're busy. And we need to be reminded by Jesus and his word. Take a breath. Where am I at in my life? What's going on right now? Am I disconnected from my great God? Even though other good things are going on around me. It can happen. You know it can happen. So God says, listen again to me. Listen to my words of comfort in a crazy world. I haven't left you. I haven't forsaken you. For I am the God of salvation. I am the God who steps in it with you. I'm not afraid to go there. Because I was not afraid to go to the cross. He's not afraid of our struggles. That's why he came. That's why he died. That's why he rose again. So that we could be his and live with him forever. For who is our God? Peter reminds us of that as the, as the crowds were starting to leave Jesus during his earthly ministry. He asked the disciples, are you going to go too? Are you guys going to walk away from who I am and what I'm all about? And Peter says those wonderful words in, the, in response, led by the Spirit, Lord, where can we go? You have the words of eternal you are the Holy One of Israel. We know that as well. Where else can we go? Jesus is the Lord and our life of salvation. He has set us free. He brings us together this morning at the appointed time to get back into his word. And I would say to humbly sit with our God. And allow him to simply speak. And remind us. We're not perfect. We're struggling. We're in the mess. But we have full forgiveness of sins. We have life everlasting because of the one who has won it for us. There's a cathedral in Milan that has three inscriptions etched on three separate doors. On the right door as you enter in, this is what it says. All that pleases is but for a moment. On the left door, as you enter in, it says all that troubles is but for a moment. In the center, the center doors that you enter in, though, these are the words that are inscripted above. Nothing is important save that which is eternal. It's good for us to know that. Pleasures, the joys of the world, they come and go. The troubles, thanks be to God, they come and go as well. What's our center? That which is one thing needed or necessary. That which is eternal. For us, that's Jesus. For us, that's the faith that we have now. The joy that we have now because we know there's a place prepared for us. And that one day Jesus is coming back so that we might be where he is. As we depart this day back into the hustle and bustle of our lives, may we continue to remember Jesus. His words. The most important thing needful today and always. May that always reside in you and also reside in me. May that peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. I do invite you to stand once again with me, if you're able, as we continue professing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son. Was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into God. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion. 
Let us pray to the Lord on behalf of all people, and especially for the people of God and the saints in this place. O oh Lord, grant us wisdom, wisdom of faith, to choose the one thing needful amid all that competes for our attention, all that competes for our loyalty. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant us knowledge of the mystery long hidden and revealed in Jesus, that we may rejoice in our own salvation and be bearers of this good news to the world around us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, give us loving hearts, patient hearts, compassionate hearts, that we would not speak harshly, but with kindness, putting the best construction on all things. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for hospitality in our homes, that they would be places of love, and that our churches would welcome new people with genuine affection in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we always pray for peace among the nations, for an end of violence and hate, for responsible leaders in government who would hearken to the voice of your word and serve us with justice and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, this day we also ask your blessings upon the sick, the suffering, the grieving, and those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Today we lift up these, your servants. Be with Verna Alberts and Marilyn Blanke, Jean Handrich and Walter House. Be with Jim Carlson, Bentley Kepke, and Dwayne Pisman. Joe Novak and Wendy Perry, Jeff Pingle, Al Schley, Jeff Schneider and Diane Schrader. Be with Marilyn Siebert and Brenda Weddy, Savannah Weddy, Larry and Virginia Wagner, Jenny Yeager, and Kurt Campbell as he has returned to the hospital. We ask your blessings upon these, your servants, and also upon the Gary Simmons family, the Howard Wilkin family, the Gladys Dume family, the James McKay family, all of the boss these loved ones recently. Remind them of your love, these families who mourn. Remind us all of the resurrection which you have won for us, that we will not die, but live. O oh Lord, be with all these, your people, and all those we lay before you in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Your Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue as we bring the offerings before us, and as we honor the Lord with these offerings. continue as we pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the benediction of the Lord this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our set forth praise song. Today is the day. Mm -hmm. 